Ah, don't you just love the sounds of spring? The sun is coming out, the birds are tweeting. I absolutely love this time of year. But we've got a bit of a problem here. The grubs have eaten this lawn. This is one of the worst I've seen in recent years. And the grubs come down and they'll start feeding on the grass roots and then they will spread out and eat the grass roots around it. And this is what's happened here and over there on that second lawn down there. There is literally nothing left. This can happen to your lawn if you don't keep on top. So we've got a bit of a situation. What we're gonna do about it? So I actually came and quoted this about three weeks ago and it's the first time I've been here and seen this lawn and quite sad and dismayed at the condition of it. Unfortunately, these things do happen. We used to have a pesticide years ago, which you put on and within a day or so, completely dead, killed, fantastic. But most pesticides are now banned in the UK. So we had a couple of options. Now, the two options, sort of chemical-ish approaches, but they're more organic. You've got nematodes, nematodes for uh, chafer grubs is what the customers put down two and a half weeks ago and she watered it every single day which is what I advised but also I mentioned about turf solve now I will be putting some turf solve on today as a secondary attack uh, if there's anything left in the ground so we've, we've gone at it in two ways she's done the nematodes for two weeks we didn't want to put them on at the same time in case it causes any issues and uh, the microscopic organisms, the nematodes are struggling to move around with the turf solve in the ground. I just didn't want to risk anything, so she's done that. Then we're going to put some turf solve on today, but we're also going to do a full renovation, which is what it needs, because there is not much left to this lawn, as you can see. So, the steps involved. What I'm going to be doing first, I'm going to get the strimmer, and cut around the edges, then I'm going to get the mower and I'm going to cut everything nice and short. Then we're going to scarify the lawn to remove thatch and bits of moss from any bits of grass that's left and get it back to uh, a nice scarified section. Then we're going to aerate the lawn using the Camon LA25 aerator and then we're going to overseed it and then we're going to top dress it. So that is the purpose of this video. If you like this video, appreciate a thumbs up and you can always subscribe if you want to. I better crack on. So, first thing, scarify. So the first thing we're gonna do is scarify. Now the scarifier won't get right up to the edges because you've got the width of the scarifier and the wheels. So the blades are just slightly in. So you get a bit around the edge where the scarifier can't reach, especially when you're right up against walls and fences and things like that. Um, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use this Wolf Garten hand scarifier. These are great. Uh, you buy the handle, you buy the handle and you buy the attachments separate and these have a 10 year warranty. I've had this a few years now and it still works perfectly well but literally if you can't afford a scarifier well, you can get them now for 70-80 quid from Screwfix Audi, about 100 quid for um, a Bosch one on Amazon there's another one which is pretty good Hyundai. On, on Amazon there's a Hyundai one which is pretty good. Um, yeah, basically you just rock it backwards and forwards. And as you can see there, it's teasing out the moss and it leaves grooves in the soil. And the grooves in the soil is a place where we can drop the seeds and the seeds are protected from birds and winds and things like that, especially later on when we're gonna give it a covering. So I'm gonna have a walk around now and just any areas where I don't think I can get with the machine, I'm going to do a bit of this.
All right, so we've actually hand scarified all the way around. Very mossy in places, but you've got to thin it out because if there's no grass there, you've got to get some grass seeds in. So now we're going to go around with the scarifier. Right, so it's been double scarified and mowed over again just to pick up any last remaining bits of debris. Now we're going to aerate the lawn, which is to punch holes in the ground, relieve compaction and improve drainage. If you haven't got a fancy machine like this, you can use a manual tool like this. I did a video which shows two or three budget ones which work really well, and these are more of the premium end because you've got these interchangeable hollow tines on the end and these push the soil up and eject the soil out some of the really older ones can get clogged up so basically these can be used across a whole lawn but it takes longer obviously the machine's faster but you use these in corners where the machine can't get and basically you press down and pull it out and that's it you've got improved drainage etc and again very sandy soil here so we're going to be leaving the cores on with this so i'm going to crack on going to add a little bit of autumn fertilizer just because it's there to help with the roots and the health and the stress that's placed upon grass <laughs> there are loads and loads of birds around and they're not afraid to be on the lawn at the same time so this is going to be interesting with the seed how much they're going to take while i'm putting the seed down yeah you're not bothered are you at all okay 
Okay, so we're going to put some seed on now. Now this seed is Horrell's Cold Start, but it can be used anytime. Um, and I've also mixed in some shaded seed as well, because there's a few shaded spots around here. So I've mixed it in really well, and uh, we're going to put plenty on without going too heavy. Now you can apply seed with a hand spreader or by hand and flicking it across or you can use a drop spreader which is over here. So these are alright but you often have to go over the lawn twice to get the same sort of coverage but they do a good job and they're accurate. So I'll see how we get on with the hand spreader and if I need to, I'll revert back to the drop spreader. Now that we have the seed down, now where there was grass, it's touching the soil because we've got the thatch out of the way. If we hadn't scarified, it would be sat on the thatch and not touching soil. We need the seeds to touch soil to improve germination rates. So that's all done. Where it is literally just bare soil, I have put quite a bit down. So what can we do to improve germination even further? Well, it is touching the soil but there is risk of birds, wind and rain from washing the seeds, moving them around. As we get heavy rain, there comes a robin. I was just talking to the customer. I see a robin on every job and there's one over there now. He'll come out from that corner. So when you buy a box of seed, it will tell you to gently rake. Now, sometimes I do that. There's the robin, pinched the seed and gone back. So you can give it a gentle rake, you can also use a roller, and we also put compost on. So the compost gets some organic stuff in, and it helps to hold a bit of water, and it helps to protect the seed. The roller helps to squash the seed into the soil, so that it's not going to blow away as much. And the raking will help to work it in a bit. Now, I don't do raking very often, but you can. Because the area, the bare spots are so big on this lawn, I am going to give it a gentle back and forth with the rake now. And you can use any rake. That bird. Come on. Pinching seeds. What are you on about? Now you can use a garden rake. Or a leaf rake. Or a landscaper's rake. The aim is just to work it backwards and forwards a bit. And I think actually the landscaper's rake would be the best answer here. So it's just a very gentle backwards and forwards okay and it's just working the seed in a little bit to the ground for a little bit of extra protection
actually I'm really pleased with that and the compost going through the compost roller worked well and the reason it worked well is because there is some stuff in there that stops it coming out too fast and so all you're left with is the little bits of not quite fully broken down material so we've gone over it all a couple of times and I'm actually really pleased with that now we've got a good covering on the seed that's going to deter birds from a lot of it they'll still find a few that's just how it is and it will also hold a fair few in place so we're on to a good thing remember the more steps you can do the better so there's only two or three more things left to do that we can do to improve germination first one is a roller so I'm gonna go over with the roller and just roll it and all it's going to do is press the seeds down into the soil which increases seed to soil contact and that's important if it's slightly wet the roller you'll find that the compost will lift off because it's wet and it will stick to the roller and then suddenly we're lifting things up and it, it's not ideal we did a job a while ago which was a four week transformation and we didn't roll it because it was raining but the lawn came through absolutely fine this one i want to roll because there's a lot of seeds there on bare soil so i want to make sure they are well pressed in after that i would normally put my emerald green wetting agent on and give it a really good watering but we're not going to do that because we're going to put some turf solve on to try and just get on top of those last few chafer grubs that are over there and then we'll give everything a watering in and that is it so I'm going to get the roller going and then we'll crack on and get the turf solve on and then get it all watered in so what you don't want to do is like twist the roller around when you need to move you go from one place and just gently ease it back across because if you twist the roller it twists the material the compost and the seeds they twist and that leaves a gap so you have to be super careful what you're doing so just up and down nice straight lines without any sharp turns to the best of your ability now also you would notice in other videos that I may have gone over with a loot that is okay when there's plenty of grass there because all it does is work the compost down to ground level in between the grass because most of this is bare soil you drag the loot or the brush it's gonna just create big gaps it's gonna move it all around and then there'll be no seed there remember all these things add up every one of these is a brownie point So you've just gained another brownie point for getting your roller out and it gives you the confidence to know that in a few weeks time more of these seeds will come through or at least you're increasing the chances the weather can certainly have a play in things but you can't do much about that and if that happens then you just have to come back at some point and put a few more seeds down. So now it's time to put the turf solve on. And it just needs a brief watering in so i'm going to get the whole lawn sprayed up and then we'll give it a watering in Okay, so now we've got to put some water on 
The main thing is that you don't drag your hose pipe across the floor because it's going to drag the compost around. And you just want a nice fine mist. Anything like that is absolutely fine. And you can even go more like that as long as you keep moving it. And your goal is to try and keep these seeds damp as much as possible for the next two to three weeks and then regular watering once it's all come through. So we don't want no heavy jets because that will move seeds. Just keep it moving. got time on your hands there's no reason for you to not have a stunning lawn right that is it we are there this has had a good watering in I've been down it all once and I've come back it all once so it's had been over the whole area twice but to be quite frank you could be here a lot and there's no no problem no harm coming out of here as often as you like every hour every two hours and just give it a quick once over try and get some hose pipe that goes around the edge of the garden that reaches across because it will make life so much easier so as usual please give me a thumbs up please think about subscribing if you want to if you've enjoyed it if you have questions, comments, put them down below in the comment section and I answer as many as I can. Don't answer all of them, but I answer as many as I can. And uh, I'm sure we'll see you on the next one. I'm going to come back to this in a few weeks to get an update on it and see what it looks like. So I will put it at the end of this video. All being well. Take care. Catch you again. Okay guys, this is the lawn that was devastated by chafer grubs maybe five weeks ago, something like that. We have a lawn. We have a lawn. We're not quite there yet. We're not at 100% perfect, but from what it was, customer's own words, was a mud pit, we have a lawn. Now from here, it looks excellent it looks absolutely amazing a sea of green it hasn't had a mow but the central part here and at the other lawn are quite thin and that is because we've had some heavy rain and there could have been some bird activity as well coming down taking some of the seeds uh, the customer was watering twice a day but they've been away a couple of times so there's been a few opportunities where it hasn't managed to get enough watering on but let's get perspective where were we literally 80 percent of this was mud same again in the other lawn i want to show you around and you can see the thin bits you can see the good and the bad in my videos okay it is quite thin what i've done i've given the customer a little bit more seed and he's going to give it a mow, he's going to chuck some seed on because literally this isn't our fault and this isn't the customer's fault, this is just down to the heavy rain now I have been showing in recent videos using garden fleece and it's something I've never used before and I'm really pleased with the progress of using fleece on a lawn so if I'd have known about it then I would have mentioned this to the customer and I would have put some fleece down but sadly that's not the case so basically we've gone half and half i've given him the seed and he's going to chuck some seed down in the next week and just keep watering it he's actually going to put some compost on as well you see how it's dried out as well it's clay so it's just a bit of an overseed really and this happens 
it happens it happens to lots of youtubers as well um it just happens as soon as you get some rain some of the seeds get washed away and again here just the odd little patch but in general it's looking good from where we are this is about five weeks something like that we have a lawn we have a lawn and that is what the customer wanted so I'm putting that down as a partial success a success that the customer is happy success that we have agreed a way forwards which is positive and it's good for the customer basically it's one of those things these things happen so once you get some heavy rain it so moving forward what we're going to think about is if you've got any really bare areas you're better off using a fleece just for those first two or three weeks just to stop heavy rain strong winds or birds taking those seeds because there's always that chance but if not then all you've got to do is just chuck a bit more seed down keep it watered and um, wait for it to come through so thanks for watching hope you've enjoyed this renovation any questions or comments please leave them down below I'm here to help you with your lawn so if you've enjoyed it please give us a thumbs up please smash the like button please subscribe to the channel it helps us all out and I really really genuinely appreciate it thanks again